Webhooks are a more technical feature of the gateway, but to sum them up really quickly, I would consider them push notifications on the web. So when a merchant under your account takes an action, such as running a transaction, having settlement occur, a notification can be sent out via a webhook to a web server that you have set up that's listening for those events. And so this all happens automatically. Once you set a webhook up, everything just occurs and you get real-time notifications of when certain events that you're interested in happen. So to set this up, you wanna go into your affiliate settings. There's nothing there right now. And so what you need to do is add your first endpoint. So we're gonna hit create. And then you get all of these options down here and a field up here to enter your URL. So I'm going to enter this, uh, which is not real, but you would put an actual web server that you have out there hooked up most likely to a PHP file or something like that, that can accept post data. And then I just need to decide what events do I want to be notified about. And so we have quite a few here. And so the use case I'm thinking about right now is I want to know when settlement happens for my merchants. I want to know that because I want to know when they get funded. So we have settlement batch complete and settlement batch failure. So I want to get notified whenever a batch is successful or failed. And then let's look at all the other ones. We have chargebacks. If you're on a processor that supports chargebacks, we can give you notifications for when those occur. And we have all sorts of transactional webhooks. So if you want to know when a sale is successful, and not when it's failed, then you can do that. Or if you want to get all of these, you can click the arrow on each one of these or drag them over, whichever you prefer, and get notifications for everything. So if you're doing local storage of transaction history, then maybe you want to turn on all of these over here on the left, move them all to the right so you can get all of the transaction history into your system automatically. Now, I'm thinking about this as more of a thing that tells me when I need to talk to a merchant. So I'm going to get rid of the settlement batch complete. I'm going to add a transaction sale unknown. I'm going to add all these unknowns actually. So I want to know when a transaction is marked as unknown because most likely what I need to do is talk to the processor and figure out what happened with that transaction. So now I know if a batch fails or any transaction type goes unknown, I'll get a webhook telling me that's the case. Now, it's hard for me to test either of these in the video, so I'm gonna do a transaction sale success, uh, which I have down here now, and so I'm adding that one as well, but the use case I'm thinking of mostly is let's just get bad situations where I may need to help out into my webhook. Now, I'm gonna save my changes, and there we go. So now all I need to do is I need to make sure that this URL is set up to accept webhooks. Now, this is not something we can cover in this video. This is a more technical thing. This is a pretty industry standard thing that you can do. Uh, the webhook will be delivered in JSON, and we give you the signing key, which your developer can use to validate. We'll pass back in each webhook. There will be header data that will let you use the signing key to validate that it's actually NMI who's sending you the webhook, because this is going to be a public URL anyone can send data to it. So you want to make sure that if it's transaction information and you're taking action on it, you want to make sure that's definitely coming from NMI. So we highly recommend using this. The documentation has an explanation as to how you can use this and an example of doing it in PHP. If at any point you want to stop receiving webhooks at the send point, you can hit the trash can icon. And if you want to edit it, you can just hit edit and then change what events you're receiving. Now at this point, I'm sure you've noticed over here on the right, I have a text editor, and this is a file called webhooks.json, which this server, the real one, is set up to receive these webhooks and then write whatever is received in the webhook to this file. So I'm gonna go over to my merchant account, run a transaction, and see that in real time hit the text file. Okay, so now I'm over in the merchant account, and I'm just gonna go run a sale. I'm gonna be very quick about it. I'm just going to enter some basic payment info and go ahead and hit charge. Okay, there we go. And now the transaction has come in. You can see my event ID. This is a unique identifier for this webhook event. You can see what event type it was. It was a sale success. 
And then you can see some information about your merchant, the name of them, their ID number, the features, was this a test mode transaction? This one was. And then all the transaction details that the merchant would receive both here and in the query API will show in the webhook body. And so we have the transaction ID and all of the details that you'd want. All the customer billing info is here, shipping and card information. And then what you do with this is up to you. You can use it to populate your own transactional database. You can use it to know that a transaction was unknown, so you need to figure out what happened with that transaction. You can know that settlement happened so that funding should be followed up very closely. There's all sorts of things you can do with webhooks, but this was a quick demo of getting one working. And once you have it working, it's totally automatic. It's instantaneous. A couple milliseconds will go by in most cases, and you'll have a webhook telling you something happened. So it's very, very fast, very easy to use. And if you have a developer who's used webhooks before, this should be very easy for them to integrate.